better not blanking let me see you better not pull up over here or i will blanking snap you in two i will knock your blank now that's in the, a threat in the blanking well yeah but you've been telling him you're gonna beat <laughs> are you kidding me well i'm reading this out loud no ma'am yeah that's a threat yes yes you threatened him then you threatened him to beat his wife and then he th he says i'm gonna beat you come over here if you come over here and i see him, i'm gonna snap you in two yeah this is the plaintiff, Jepeth Chafin. He says he worked for the defendant on a home improvement job, and things got hostile between them. The guy tried to punch him. He tased him in the neck. The cop showed up, and he's here suing for the $1,250 he's owed for the work he did. This is the defendant, Christopher Pettit. He says the plaintiff's a big liar. He never threw a punch at him, and the hot-headed plaintiff tased him for no reason. Bottom line, the out-of-control guy was paid for his work, and he owes him nothing. He's accused of accosting a co-roofer. All parties, please use your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Chafin, you are suing Mr. Pettit, for $1,250 that you say he owes you and won't pay you, tell me what happened. Yes, ma'am. I was approached by him and his wife in a black avalanche, and he was driving at the time. And uh, he was telling me that he was referred by Scott, which does the maintenance at Cabana Estates. Uh, which is a mobile home development that you both live in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And tell me what he, um, what he promises you in return for what you were supposed to be doing. Well, we were supposed to get $300 for each skirting job that we do because the total amount was $600 apiece, okay? As, as, as well as the daily money fee, which is How much to be money were you supposed to get from that job? I, I was supposed to get half of the $600, which would be $300 cash, and I was supposed to get the gas money, which in that truck that I bought was a small gas, so, so it only took $50 for gas. So the gas was supposed to be included. And then I was supposed to get daily money to be able to purchase a hotel. This week it was a hundred. It was a hundred dollars for two days, so it was fifty dollars a day, which we was up there for four, for four days, which ended up being two hundred dollars. All right, and then so it was supposed to be for the two skirting jobs, three hundred each, fifty for the gas, and two hundred for the per diem the first week. Yes, ma'am. All right, what did you get? Yes, Judge, I apologize. That's fine. What did you end up getting? I did not receive no money for the skirting jobs, period. But as far as the money that I did obtain, the first week was perfect because I didn't have to pay any of the gas money. And I did receive $50 uh, per day that I was up there. So you got we the did. 200 and you didn't have to pay gas money. Why? Because it was supposed to be included for even going. Okay. So you got the two things that you were promised, the 200 and the 50, but you didn't get paid at all for the skirting job. And was the skirting job completed in that first week? Yes, ma'am. Both of them? No, ma'am. Okay. And it's a video that I sent okay. showing that we did do the first skirting job and we was going to have to come back that next week. Okay. And so did you come back the next week? Yes, ma'am, I did. And then what happens? He gets the money like we did when we pull up at the Harps to obtain the money from the debit card. And he comes out and he gives me $70. He tells me that this time I have to pay half on gas and that we was getting two days credit for this week to where we wasn't getting any daily money. So what happened? When we finished the second skirting job, we were going to immediately do the, the, the front deck to this trailer. Okay. And, and, and that's where he kind of had a problem. But I did what, what I did. What was his problem? That Wednesday, what he, he was trying to do was pocket the daily money. So... It, that's that's a hundred dollars that he thought we were gonna get when he only came to me with seventy bucks, which is he was saying that it's a hundred dollars a piece now instead of two hundred dollars. This week is gonna be a hundred dollars a piece because we're, we've got two days credit. Yeah, I don't get the math, but just so tell me what happens on Wednesday. I didn't get the math neither, ma'am. I mean, Yana, 
But Wednesday, I told him that to be respectful towards my situation, meaning I need to go back to my camper because I had nobody else there, you know, taking care of my dogs. So if you can understand that I came back Wednesday, I was going to leave Thursday night anyway and just be back Friday. Okay, well, Thursday when I got to work, we did the work. I, I ended up leaving, and I texted him immediately when I got back. Okay, when I get back, I text him. I said, hey, bro, I made it back. I'll be back in the morning, and we can, we can, we can get back after it. He, his next text to me was, no, nah, brother, don't worry about it because we lost power at Green Forest. There's no more power in Green Forest. And my wife is going to bring, she's going to, she's going to take my daughter out of, my stepdaughter out of, out of school, and they're going to come up here, and we're going to just do the work together. And then when I get back, I'll be able to pay your money for the skirting job, and then we can get to the skirting job that we, we know was, was after that job. Okay, but so... But when he told me not... He tells, he tells you not to come, and then you tell him what? I told him, if, 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 if your wife is coming with the kid, I understand. I'll just wait for you to come back. I was just waiting on him to text me back. Well, no call, no text for that week, that next week. Okay, on the 27th, I contacted him in the morning. As soon as I woke up and told him, I don't want no more contact from you or your wife. As soon as I get paid, stay away from my lot. Don't call my phone. I, I just want to leave it like that. Mr. Pettit, what was the agreement that you had with Mr. Chafin regarding him working for you? Okay, when I talked to him about the sterling job, I told him straight up that I said it doesn't pay very much. It's only $500 for the whole job. Two fifty for the skirting, two fifty for the deck. The reason, the reason the so, um, okay, I'm sorry, two fifty for him. Yes, two fifty for the skirting is what I was going to pay him. I was going to pay him five hundred dollars for the whole job. But what and about the said, per well, diem and everything else? Yes, yes, and then it was fifty dollars a day for a per diem. Okay. So when we went up to the job the first time we went up there, I gave him two hundred bucks. I paid for the gas to go up there and everything. It was all good. We uh, started on a Tuesday, but we ended up leaving on a Wednesday because uh, we ran out of material. They didn't bid it right. They didn't get enough material there. No big deal. So what we ended up doing is going back. And when we went back, my buddy Scott said, hey, I'll go ahead and pay you for the skirting. It's not your fault that you didn't get it done. And, it, and for me, it paid $500 for each uh, trailer to do the skirting. Okay, so that's a thousand dollars. I told him I'd give him two fifty for for the skirting and two fifty for the decking. No, you whatever. told him two fifty for each think, skirting. But go ahead. No, I told him two fifty for the whole thing, not for both of them. Okay, go on. Anyway, as we sat there and I gave him that two fifty, so now he told is me, "Is this over We're go up? Back uh, next uh, week. Is this over and above the per diem?" The per diem was, yeah, the per diem was by itself. I gave him so the did you for give the him two hundred for the per diem and two fifty? So you gave him four hundred and fifty? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Watch this. Did he give you four hundred and fifty, sure Mr. Chafin? No, ma'am. No, Yana. Okay. Um, you know, when you're dealing in cash, which I understand, you know, that this is how it works, you might want to still have receipts um, because, you know, then you get into this kind of swearing match. <laughs> According to you, you paid him four fifty, and then what happened? And then we ended up going back. Well. Uh, Scott said he paid fifty dollars per day, right? Well, he got two hundred. We were only there for two days, so he had two days credit. All right. So I'm according to you, he didn't stay four days, so he shouldn't be getting more per he diem did. the next week. You give him, however, per diem, and how much per diem do you give him? I gave him a hundred dollars. So anyway, so we go up there the second time. We worked the two days that he had credit Monday, Tuesday. Then he had credit for. Then he got the $100, which is for two more days. We worked Wednesday and then Thursday. He told me he wasn't making enough money and that he just, he can make more money back home. He said, I'm just going to go ahead and go. And I was going to give him, you know, a little bit of money for what he did. So um, in your he, mind, so he, you owed him he, something. But what was that something? hundred bucks is what I was going to pay him. All right. So back, at some point when you get back, you tell him... I'm, you must talk with him at some point and say, I'm going to pay you only 100 right? Yeah, and that's when he flipped out. I believe you have this on the um, documents. Yep. And he sat there and he ended up... Hold on uh, one second. Let me find those texts. Am I still going to get paid? I ain't heard from you. If I have not heard from you, I'm telling you the truth. 
I'm going to sue you. Dude, you left. I'm, you didn't help finish. Done. You didn't even help get the first half of the deck and stairs done. I had to pay David money. I don't have, so you are getting $100. I did not work Monday through Thursday for 100 bucks. I knew you was full of blank. I will Ooh. just see you <laughs> and right, show you how I feel about white men like you that think something for nothing, man up when you see me. Blank Boggs, I oughta come up there now and you owe me $20. What's $20 for? For the pen. What because kind of I pen? Don't smoke vape. I don't smoke vape pens. And when we was in great for, uh, Green Forest, he wanted to purchase the great, the, 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 the pen that I had. For the pen, but I guarantee your stupid for. blank will not pay me. But I'm not petty like $100 that. $100 and I'ma beat your blank. To which I he responds, you dude, you, know you need to stop you know while why? you because stop interrupting me. Dude, message. you need to stop I'm not talking to my while you something I told you you were making before you started. Nah, blank. I'm a beat your blank for playing with me. And I uh, wife there. I'm a touch her too. That's maybe not the best idea to threaten a man. No, to yeah, no, it wasn't. But I, boy, I, you I just you blanked that up I'm not talking, talking to about my wife. I'm standing messages. in my front yard. Come on, blank. I'm putting shoes on now. I hope you is in your front. I'm coming. You can sit there and say whatever you want to me, whatever this is between you and me. You talk about my wife, you just blanking blanked up. You better not blanking let me see. You better not pull up over here or I will blanking snap you in two. I will knock your blank in the, in the blanking... Well, yeah, but you've been telling him you're going to beat... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, I'm reading this out loud. No, ma'am. Yeah, that's a threat. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you threatened him, then you threatened to beat his wife, and then he, th he says, I'm going to beat you, come over here. If you come over here and I see him, I'm going to snap you in two. Yeah, he did. You better have my 250, or you get in your beat, plus take it to court. And I'm All not right. even trying to talk to him because so I got So what happens? Let me ask you no first, Mr. Order. Chafin, what happens? I proceeded to go to the manager's office, and I called to get the phone numbers because I was just trying to get, I was inquiring about his last name. So I, that's when I first pulled up in the front of the cabana. And at this time, they're pulling off my street in the truck, except he's not driving that truck. His wife is driving the truck. And, and what happens? She rolls down the window and she said, come to the house. When she makes the U-turn, okay, he rolls down his window and holds out his hand, the envelope. He says, come get some. I got your money. So instead of me being smart about it and waiting for the police because I had already called twice, I, I followed them to their trailer. When his wife pulled up to the driveway, this is where the taser incident came into play, okay? He jumps out the truck, okay? I immediately tased my taser out, out my truck. I said, don't you do it. I said, don't come in my vehicle. I said, if you're not really trying to give me my money, I'm gonna just drive off. When I'm starting to drive off, he threw the right punch and I blocked it with my left, which was just how happened holding the taser. Now, I was holding the taser when, I, when he jumped out the truck, I tased the taser. When I let go of that taser, and he threw that punch, and I blocked that right punch, the prongs touch his neck. What happened first, but the punch or the tase? The punch. That's what threw his body in my vehicle. When he did that, I went like this. But I, I'm left-handed. When he threw the punch, he, I didn't tase him, but since I had already tased my taser, when he threw the punch, I blocked the taser. I blocked that, and the taser prongs touch his neck. Oh, and he went, oh wow, like that's that. that's now his quite coincidental that the taser touched his neck. Let me ask you your version of how it happened, Mr. Pettit. Holy cow, this guy is the biggest liar I've ever seen in my life. What happened was, is when he pulled up, I got out of the truck, I went up to the window. I said, dude, what are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. I said, I'll get your money, follow me to the bank. Follow me to the bank, and I will I get your money. I never swung a punch at him at all. Never. So what did all. happen? He swung up and he hit me with a taser. Is what he did. But, but how he's sitting then inside he the car. Go, he didn't even come out of the car. I know. He reached over and hit me with the taser. And he how is got he reaching me. over? If you're obviously coming to the car, he, he's sitting inside the car. He doesn't come out of the car. So how is it that he? You know, if you're a respectful distance, he can't tase you. You had to come up close, right? Well, I was close. I was close, but I wasn't trying to fight him. No, after the I crap wanted, he said about your wife, that he was going to beat your wife. I wanted to beat his. Don't get me wrong, but I was told not to. Just you know, do it the right way.
All I did was try to get So out after what's going the text I inside. just read, you want me to believe that you told him, oh, follow me to the bank and I'll be happy to pay you. That's what you want me to believe. Because yes, I don't think that those texts are conducive to believing that. I think that But I was gonna pay him. Well I had no problem. How much him. were you gonna pay him? I was gonna give him his hundred and twenty dollars. This is nothing to um your honor. I never told him that I was gonna pay him three hundred dollars for each skirting. Because what it, I got paid Five hundred dollars for his skirting, so that's a thousand. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe now, him on that either. Because when I see in the text that I'm he said, uh, "Stop talking." When I see in the text that he says to you, "Give me my two hundred and fifty dollars," he's not saying, "Give me my one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars." So I agree with right. you. Everything has become very embellished because you two, who live in the same trailer park community, hate each other. Are, do you see each other now? No. Good. All right. Um, no. So now you're also guy. suing for damage to your truck. What was the damage to your truck, Mr. Uh, Chafin? He was punching the knee in it while he was on the side of it trying to get me to come out the vehicle. So while he's punching and kicking it, it dented it, my truck. Is this what you're referring to? I am. You see that dent behind that skirting? That dent right there. He was right there. Do you have any lot. witnesses, that, that, Mr. Chafin, to um, him damaging your truck? Because I'm looking at the truck. It's a, t it's a 2002 truck. There's a lot of damage in the truck that isn't his. And I, I want to know if you have any witnesses to him damaging the truck. My, my witness was supposed to be here. but okay. and, and what he saw was the guy, when he wrote the statement... I don't, I don't want to know what you say someone him. else saw. I want to know what... I want to hear from someone who saw. Mr. Uh, Pettit, do you have any witnesses? Yes, ma'am. My wife's right here, too. Let me talk to your wife. Here's my wife. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good. What's your name? Hi. Barbara Pettit. Okay, did your husband kick the back of the truck? No, ma'am. After the tase, your husband does or says what? Because I can't imagine he took that line down. No, he was mad. He said, dude, I can't believe you blinking and tased me. And I, I was trying to give you your money. And uh, my husband was upset. I'm not going to lie. He said, you're not going to come over to threaten my husband or threaten my wife. You know, do, do whatever you want to me, but you don't threaten my wife. All right. That's my, Go that's ahead my and wife. switch with your okay. husband. Um, Mr. Chafin, why should I believe that you're owed for the job anything more than what I read in the text, which was $250? That text, I was, I was, I was heated. If, 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 if getting $0 was going to give me at least $250, I would have told him, yeah, give me the 250 because all I want to do is get his last name. Okay, because I got you, but that's not work. how the texts read. And the texts are, are great because they've really made judges' jobs so much easier because they reflect what happens before people reflect right. and start thinking about how they want their case to appear in court. So I am ready to rule, and let me tell you my ruling. First of all, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. If what you say to him is, you owe me 250 I agree with you that 120 isn't going to cut it. So, but I, I am going to order him to pay you the 250. I don't believe there's enough proof about him damaging the truck. Um, and if anything, I do see you as the aggressor going over there with a taser in your hand. But I am ordering him to pay you 250 for the rest of the job because I also don't think that you work those number of days so that he can pay you 100 bucks and then pay you back the 20 he owes you. So actually, 270 because that includes the vape pen. Good luck, <laughs> folks. Thank you, Yana. Well, in this minor war between these two parties, the plaintiff is going to prevail. He's going to get two hundred and seventy dollars. Mr. Pettit, how do you how do you feel about this? What do you think about the judge's decision? I'm not too happy with it, but it is what it is. You know, I mean, I'm glad that it's over with. <laughs> what have you learned from this whole experience with him? Well, for one thing, uh, make sure I have it on paper. <laughs> you you learned a valuable lesson. Write it down on paper. Yes, I right. All right, Mr. Chafin, let me let me talk to him for a yes, minute. Sir. Mr. Chafin, you're going to get $270. That's what the judge says. You okay with that? I feel blessed because I was getting you manipulated do. and standing and doing work and not getting paid. But with this $250, with my type of blessings, I'm going to put this and invest this, and it's going to triple fold, and I'm going to get paid what I should have got paid a long time ago. All right, very good. Well, at least you're satisfied. Uh, you were a little hot-headed there, but you're satisfied now. Okay, that'll bring this uh, amazing case to a close. The plaintiff gets $270, and he's happy. Harvey? So, Doug, this is interesting because there's an allegation that the defendant damaged the plaintiff's truck, but there was a lot of other damage. 
it doesn't mean that they couldn't get money for the truck if they could prove specific damage. But here, there were so many things wrong with the truck and so much damage, you couldn't piece it out and figure out the defendant did that, but somebody else did that. And that's why the plaintiffs lost on that count. I live in California, which is a two-party consent state. Does this law apply to public spaces? Am I allowed to record people's conversations in public places? If your state requires two-party consent... For a recording. Right, to, to record a conversation with someone, uh, you want to tread lightly around that because some of these states have felony charges for people Florida is one of them. Florida is one, and, and, and Florida's not alone. There's a bunch of others as well. And a lot have misdemeanor charges and civil liability and all kinds of problems. Now, in this question, they're asking about public versus private space. There are some states that say, well, if you're in public, only one party might have to give consent in a two-party consent state. But they all, in the final analysis, go back to, did the person who's aggrieved by this, who got tape recorded, did he or she have a reasonable expectation of privacy in that conversation? So just because I happen to be in public doesn't mean that you and I can't have a private conversation that we both expect to be private uh, because we're in the public square or we're sitting uh, under the old oak tree in front of the courthouse or something. That doesn't mean you can't just go, ah, oh, we was out in public. It's all in public, so yeah. I can record anything they say. Yeah, it's uh, not. get a, you in some hot water. It isn't about the location. Um, exactly. It's about the doesn't expectation of privacy. Right, it doesn't magically convert it to, hey, it's okay. This is the plaintiff, Jola Malik. She says the defendant got her a tent which fell down and broke, so she had him return it to the place he purchased it. When she asked for her money back, he told her he would send it to her when he got it from the store. Turns out the guy tried to pocket her money, claiming the store never paid him. But she has proof they did and is suing this liar for the $1,205 he owes her. This is the defendant, Kendrick. He says the plaintiff went around telling everyone he was a thief and a liar, and she tried to ruin his good reputation in the community. So he said the heck with her and made her wait for the tent refund. He helped the plaintiff with her restaurant for months during COVID. She didn't pay him a penny, and if anyone's owed money today, it's him. He's accused of stealing. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,500 for loss of income and pain and suffering. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she is sick and tired of being ripped off by the defendant who owes her money and simply won't pay. But the defendant says he was helping this lady out. She made up false things about him and has ruined his good reputation. It's the case of it takes a thief. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Malik, you are uh, suing on behalf of Piggy's Cafe, Mr. Kendrick and his business, for $1,205 and a refund for a tent. Tell me what happened here. Uh, yes, about um, mid um, to late March 2020, uh, a group of us had gone out for uh, an afternoon, and I had mentioned that I needed a tent for a uh, because of COVID in our back space. And um, he had mentioned that he worked for Lowe's and that he could get one and use his discount. Okay. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's great, thank you. All right, now, how do you know him? Um, from him coming into the restaurant. He's been a patron of the restaurant for how long? Uh, a couple months before that happened. Uh, I would say, I don't know, maybe that happened in March, so maybe like December or January. Okay, and according to you, Mr. Kendrick, how long have you been a patron of Piggy's Cafe? I've been a patron of Piggy's Cafe for multiple years before she even started, or before she even took over the place when, uh, um, unfortunately, our dad passed away. So okay. I was, I would go to the restaurant and I was hosting karaoke events and um, what have you, and there's a guy named Victor who was the host of the, the events. And um, he, when he was not there, I would fill in and I would be there uh, to host in the karaoke events. And her father and I were actually very close. All right, so he mentions that he works for Lowe's and he could get it, or he has a discount at Lowe's. You say that's great. And then what happens? 
Um, he said he searched for a tent and found the tent, um, and it was $400. So I sent him the $400. Uh, said thank you, you know, that's great, I can't believe it. Um, he said it'll take a couple of weeks to get in, blah, blah, blah. But then I guess when it came in, he said it was plastic and it wouldn't work. So he tells so you this one he, won't work um, and he tells decided, you it's gonna be you know, another what, $800? Yeah, $800 okay. because of shipping and uh, handling and the tent was more expensive. So it came out to 12 Oh, did he show you a picture of the tent, or did did you see it online or anything? He uh, sent he sent me a picture of it. Yes. He tells you it's twelve oh five. You pay him twelve oh five, and then what happens? You get the tent mm -hmm. when? I get the tent in uh, at the end of April. I have it or I have it put up in May, and then it falls down. Um, well, it snap. It was bending. So then one day it just completely, When like, is the one day that that happened? It was August, the end of August. Okay. And... So I called him and I asked him, if you have the receipt, I'll bring it all to Lowe's. And he's like, oh, I bought it from Overstock. And I was like, oh, even better. They take chewed gum back, you know? Like, <laughs> they take everything back. <laughs> but they, so he, they, you know... Okay, so, so go ahead. <laughs> You know, I asked him if he wanted help with the process of doing it. He said, no, he'll take care of it. Sent me an email from them saying that by the 22nd of September, I, I would have the refund back. And then um, on the 22nd, when I asked him, he said he didn't have it yet, that I had to wait and be patient like he was. And then it was... Then his card got compromised, and then he didn't feel like giving it to me. Then what do you I mean was he didn't mean, feel uh, like giving it to you? Tell me that. Part. I don't know. He texts that I was a mean, ugly old lady. <laughs> I saw mean. I didn't see uh, ugly. Hold on one second. Okay, now this is a picture of how it broke, correct? Yeah. Yep. All right, so what happens, Mr. Um, Kendrick? Let me hear from you. Why hasn't she received her 1205 back from over? Okay. Go ahead. It took me two and a half months to find this tent. We spoke Why? about this in March because, because there were none available. That one tent that I got from Overstock, that was the only tent available. And if anybody in this whole state tried to find this tent, they would not be able to because find it. Because it was all out that of stock a, because of COVID? No, well, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was because of COVID or just shipping issues or manufacturing issues, but that was the only tent available. Okay. And it did take me two and a half months to find that tent. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm working for this woman. And um, so once I get How the are tent, you working for um, her? Wait, when you say working for this woman, you mean trying to find the tent? At the beginning of her opening that restaurant, when, when it opened back up after her father passing, she ended up taking the restaurant over. All right. I went into this restaurant. And I've done this with four different restaurants in this state, okay? I, I do, this is what I do. I'm, I, there's only about four or five promoters that are really good out here, and I'm one of them, and I, and I pride myself on that. So I've gone to four different restaurants, and I will go for three weeks with my lady and um, test out and see how it is. Um, there was no one going to that restaurant. There was no events, there was no karaoke, and it would be like one-off events, once a month, once every other month. It wasn't really steady traffic going in that restaurant. And that's what I'm here for. That's what I do for businesses. I've, I helped over 200 small businesses. I'm totally confused. With, with Did she hire However, you to do that? Mm -hmm. Were you hired as a promoter for the restaurant, yes or no? I was hired to do karaoke. Okay. okay, and I was, uh, and, and and I did, I did my karaoke nights, and I also would do my mini mall shops there. I have the biggest DJ in Connecticut who does, um, he does my events, he does okay. my mini mall events with me. Okay. So I was, I did that, and I was bringing a lot of attention and a lot of business to her. Okay. All right. Um, so that's that's how this all came about. So she decided to ask me to get the tent. She gave me the three hundred and some some odd dollars at first, and I sent her the exact amount. Once I told her, hey, this the is not going to work. The tent that you ordered from um, Lowe's yeah. cost how much at Lowe's? Three eighty nine and some change. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was So it you was weren't making any money on that tent? I was not making money on okay, that tent. Okay, go on. So when um, I realized that that wouldn't work, I stumbled on Overstock, and I finally found the very last tent that they had left. All right, I sent her how much it was going to cost. I'm like, so you already gave me this. I already have that aside. So, you know, just it's going to be this much extra. She sent it with no problem. I bought the tent right away. 
Okay, okay. how much did that Have tent cost you? It, it, so I, I was able to look online and find like coupons and discounts for Overstock just so I can make something out of all the work that I was doing. So I found some coupons. Did she know you were making money off of the work that you were doing? No. Was the tent 1205, but then with coupons, it was less? It was 1193 or something like that. All right, yeah. so the, the stock price is 1193, that's what you showed her, and then you ended up with coupons and you got the price lower and then you decided I should get something for my, for my troubles and I'm gonna pocket the rest. All right, so go on. And the, and one of the main reasons is while we were conversing, um, she, she couldn't have it shipped to her restaurant. So I had it shipped to my mother's house, which is about seven or eight blocks away. So the thing goes to my mother's house, who's 60 years old. She's pulling these boxes in, and they're huge Are boxes. you trying to imply She's that 60 years old is old? No, 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 I no. should hope she, not. But I, I assure you she's not. She's, she's very capable. <laughs> However, those, those boxes... I don't like your tone. Are, 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 <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> those, those boxes, I apologize. Those, those boxes, you know, you know, 70 to 100 pounds each. So I was carrying those boxes Are you guys in, friends and, at this um, point? Like, is she under the impression um, that you're... No. You're her friend and you're helping her because you offered and all that? Yes, I w that we, we were doing it. This is, this is me being a friend, all right? And um, that, that's what happened. And then all summer, she used this tent. Did you keep and, the tent, um, uh, Ms. Malik, did you keep the tent up all summer? We did. Okay. So you got yeah. your use out of the tent we and had the summer's over. It's August. Well, I guess the summer's pretty over. Uh, it's August when you say, I want my money back because this thing broke. And... Go ahead. I didn't really say it like that. I said, let me see if I could get it back. Let me see if I can get something back. Maybe they can give us poles that broke, the poles that caved in. I don't know. Let right. me take it to Lowe's. I won't get you involved. I'll do it on my own. And what did and, he say? Um, he said he didn't get it from Lowe's. I'm like, oh, okay. He said he bought it from Overstock. So then when you return it, Mr. Kendrick, did they give you your money back? So, uh, yes, I returned it, and they sent it to my Cash App card. Okay, so right? what did they return? And they returned 900 and what? 973.86. What day did they return that? The refund came September 29th. Okay. I remember it came September, September 29th. because I, I had called Overstock, and they sent me, they actually sent me the receipt of when it was deposited on September 9th. But you're texting her saying you need to be patient like I'm being patient when the money had already been returned. So why is that? When you see that deposit, it took them two, it took them a couple of weeks for that to drop into my account. In between then, I was getting calls and text messages from other promoters and from friends of mine and from bartenders that work for her telling me that she is bad mouthing me, calling me a liar and a thief. And um, I got I got um, diagnosed. Well, it was I, I have a tumor in my stomach and I'm sorry uh, it to was hear that said to be cancer before I figured out what was going on. The whole time I'm out of work and I was very, very sick because we didn't know what was going on. She's telling people I'm lying about being sick. I'm faking it. And um, I, just basically saying I'm a liar. Okay. All right. So I'm trying to understand to why I, I, there's there's only two possible avenues here. Either you return 973.86 or you return 1205. Where is the avenue where you return nothing, which is what you did? I'm going to be honest. I said every week that I keep hearing people keep talking about me, you're gonna wait. I have the money, I'm not, I have it, but you're gonna wait because you're being so rude and mean to me. And I lost a lot of business behind it, all right? I had two very, very successful events and they already, they already happened, you know, in the, in the past. Um, and I was supposed to be on those events I lost out on at least five hundred two thousand dollars on both of those events. Well, you and right. that's the basis of your counterclaim for pain and suffering and loss of income. But how are you going to prove that? I mean, I, I, the only way I could prove it is to get the promoter himself and let him talk to you. <laughs> you know, that's the only way that would happen. And now, um, him and I have a, a iffy relationship behind what's going on here. Okay, but you would have to prove that in order to get me to order her to pay you money for loss of income. You'd have to actually come in with proof that you lost the income. That's, you can't just say it. Um, so you end up, you're angry so you don't refund anything. Is this business or isn't it? Like I said, um, she's looking for, she was looking for 1205 and I kept telling her it was 973. She didn't, she didn't want that. And she said, I'll see you in court. 
Okay, so now you tell me, I when did he first tell you it was 973, Ms. Malik? Were you surprised to hear that it was 973? I was very surprised because Why? he had told me it was 12.05. So then how um, did you I learn that. that it was going to be so, 973 or that he had only paid 973? When um, Overstock sent me the email saying what was refunded and I asked why he charged me 12.05 and he said, oh, that was because I did all the looking for the tent and all that. I was like, wait a minute, no. I never agreed to any of that. Like I never agreed I to pay you a finder's fee. You were doing this no, as a friend. No, I would have did it myself. You if lied it was to me overstock. and told me it was twelve oh five, and now it turns out you got a discount, and you didn't pass that on to me. And here's the thing, though, Mr. Kendrick, you know you got to pick your poison here. And if your if your premise is, well, I get to keep that. She agreed to that price, and that's what I get. That. Is that your premise? Is this a business deal? She agreed to it, so I, I'm allowed to say 1205, right? Correct. Well, then when she returns a tent because it's broken, how is it not still a business deal? And how do you not st have to return the 1205? The problem comes when the thing breaks and she wants her money back, and now she's not going to get the 1205. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the $1,205, the loss of income and pain and suffering. I am ruling against you. That's my verdict. So, the plaintiff prevails. She's going to get the $1,205 back that she had given to the defendant. Mr. Kendrick, how do you, how do you feel about this? Um, you know, uh, I'm okay with that. It is, you know, um, I was, I planned on giving her the 973.86, but, and it, it was held off because she was looking for more than that. So, you know, and the, ju the judge made a ruling. I don't go against that. Okay, uh, Ms. Malik, you know, I'm interested in one thing. You put the 10 up in May, you used it all of June, July, and August, and then you, you want to send it back and get a full refund. Is that fair to, to use it no, like I that for three months? No, I want to get a full refund. That's not, the, that's not what happened. I wanted to see if I could get the pole that broke. And when I found out it wasn't bought from where he told me it was being bought, purchased, yeah. then I yeah. realized that Overstock takes everything back or they'll send you the pieces that broke. You never asked for the pieces, though, from Overstock, apparently. Is that right? I didn't do the um, I didn't do the refund. He did. All right. Well, congratulations. You're going to get your money. So, Doug, look, there are two elements to every lawsuit: liability and damages. If you prove that somebody lied about you, um, then you can sue them for defamation. It typically has to cause some kind of scorn and ridicule. But even if you can prove that, then you have to prove damages that you lost money as a result of the lies. In this case, the defendant fell short. A person passed away. He had a leased BMW. The executor provided all required paperwork to BMW Financial. BMW refuses to pick up the car. Does the executor still have to pay the lease? If you lease a car, you are the lessee, what they call in the law, the lessee of the car. If the lessee dies, that car now becomes an obligation of the estate. If you have a year left on the, on the lease, chances are the estate, if there's money in it, is going to still be liable to pay those monthly payments or to pay an early termination fee and try I mean, that's to That's what it. I would do. If I was the executor, I would, I would take the car to BMW and say right. this is a voluntary surrender. There's going to be a, right. uh, early termination fees involved, right. but you cut your losses. Right. Plus, they'll probably whack you for wear and tear and all the other stuff they'll that goes along with stuff. it. But, but, but the, so the obligation persists even though right. the person died. Now, I used to work in an installment loan department. That was one of my first jobs, uh, including at one point because I had such a deep voice. They made, me, they made me the repo man right. on the phone because I was very threatening on the phone. I, <laughs> I weighed 100 pounds and I was 18 years well, old, so something. they didn't you're let just, me do it in person. You're not just threatening on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, I know there was an insurance that some people could buy that right. would terminate their loan obligations upon death. And... Um, so unless you have, if right. I croak insurance. Right. Or, yeah. or unless the lease speaks directly to it and says, oh, by the way, if you die, you just have to pay three months and surrender it or something. Right. Like, I suppose But otherwise, possible. obligations yeah. of the person who passed continue to be obligations right. of that person's estate. That's it for this session of the People's Court. We'll see you next time.